Hi, in today's video I'm going to cover something that's been asked quite frequently during some of my trainings and that is what is the fastest way to load some data into a database. Now to give a very uh, basic example of this I've gone ahead and created a database uh, table I've got and created a database and uh, I've got about two million rows which is in a CSV file and I want to load that into the database. Now the idea here is that we've got a number of different options each of them have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you got the bulk insert that you can run with SSI as well as the bulk insert command that you can run with in Management Studio which is essentially the same and then you got BCP, uh, you got the ADO.NET, OLEDB, uh, you got the SQL Server destination, you got the import export wizard within Management Studio which is again to basically just an SSIS package and you got the open row set so we have a number of ways that we can move data into the database and obviously all of them have different advantages and disadvantages for example the bulk insert can take advantage of the bulk log recovery model and uh, perform certain uh, better operations at the database level whereas uh, the data flow task that we have inside SSIS packages allow transformation calculations manipulating the data so that you don't have to do all that once uh, you load the data into the database so other than these advantages and disadvantages I want to mainly focus on the performance characteristics so uh, what I'll do today is I'm going to go ahead I can see here I've opened up an SSIS package and I've got a number of different tasks here and uh, if I look at my database you'll see that I've got some tables into which I want to load the data so the first task I want to execute is a bulk insert task and now this is a fairly common task it's easy to go ahead and use because it doesn't really have a lot of configurations you got the server details you got the carriage delimiter uh, carriage run and line feed delimiter with the uh, uh, comma separated values and then you got the batch size which is about uh, 100,000 in this case now the batch size obviously has an impact in terms of the ETL performance smaller batch sizes take slightly longer and larger batch sizes while usually requiring more RAM uh, are able to complete faster it's usually trial and error in terms of identifying what the optimum batch size is depending on your system configuration but uh, let's go ahead and execute this so I'll execute the bulk insert task and uh, I think it'll take about roughly uh, 20 seconds 20 to 28 seconds I guess so in this task you can see it's commonly understood or it's established that bulk insert is one of the fastest tasks available uh, disadvantages include the fact that uh, it obviously doesn't allow transformations it's a direct push into the database which for most cases I think would be fine because we're all accustomed to using staging tables and then performing transformations uh, after those staging tables are populated so as you can see here we've got about 27 seconds here for the bulk insert which is uh, a fairly de decent time I'd say considering my laptops configuration as well as uh, the fact that it's about 2 million rows now the next one that I want to show you is the OLEDB task now this is obviously a data flow task because if you open up data flow you can see here that we've got OLEDB sources uh, a flat file source and OLEDB destination so that's what this is about now I'm going to go ahead and execute this but before I do that there's something very important that we need to uh, understand here OLEDB actually has a default buffer size allocated to it and that is this amount that you see here uh, what you would need to do from an uh, import-export behavior perspective would be to identify these average row size of the data coming in and then divide that row size with this value uh, divide this value with that row size to arrive at what you think would be the maximum number of rows that fit within uh, this much amount of uh, buffer size so I'm gonna go ahead and choose an extremely small value of uh, 500,000 at the moment I'm sorry uh, 500 and uh, I'm gonna execute this and you'll see that this will take a slightly longer amount of time compared to bulk insert because it doesn't really use any of the uh, SQL server uh, bulk log recovery uh, aspects around it so it's not really doing the most efficient way of ETL into the database but advantages include that you obviously have the ability to do transformations and things like that which uh, might actually work out better in terms of certain other data enrichment or enhancement that you're doing validation cleanups things like that which might not always be best handled within the database so for that uh, reason uh, there are genuine cases where OLEDB destinations or any of the other data flow tasks actually make uh, a lot of sense when you're trying to uh, import uh, huge volumes of data so now this one if you go ahead and look here in the data flow task you'll see we're about at 1.5 uh, million rows so we're just about done and uh, at this point it's pretty obvious that it's a little uh, longer or it's taking a little longer than uh, uh, what it would take for the bulk insert task right 
0 1.8 1.9 and 2 million so this particular OLEDB task as you can see it took about 1 1 minute and 13 seconds so uh, that's where you'll see that difference in terms of the behavior so uh, now if I go ahead and increase the uh, the row count to a slightly larger value which I'll go ahead and do right now you'll notice that the performance increases significantly so I'm gonna make this 9500 which is a rough approximation of what I think the average row size is and I'm truncating the table just so that it can start allocations again and uh, let me execute this one more time and this time we should see a significant uh, drop in the execution time. Obviously it's still not going to be as fast as the bulk insert task but it's going to be close enough because we're efficiently used, utilizing the RAM. Uh, so while that's happening what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and prepare some of the statements for uh, the bul uh, BCP command which is again not really a pure SQL server command because it's executed within command prompt per se and uh, also then I'll go ahead and show you the row set, uh, open row set, which is another way of executing data. So at this point, if you see, as soon as I change the row count uh, to uh, 10,000 or 9,500, you'll see that it dropped down from one minute, uh, I, I don't remember, one minute 30 seconds, I guess, to uh, 35 seconds. So this is something you need to keep in mind when you're working with data flow tasks. So now that we've done OLEDB uh, command, let's do the next one, which is a SQL Server destination. So the good thing about the SQL Server destination is that it is one of the fastest ways that you can go ahead and load data into uh, SQL Server. However, uh, the only limitation of this command is that the files and everything related to the ETL needs to be hosted on the same server. So the da database, as well as the source files, as well as integration services and uh, the database engine, everything has to be on the same server. So in this case, it's more about really utilizing the existing hardware more efficiently rather than giving you the flexibility to fetch data from multiple places and do remote operations. So uh, I'm again making the same changes as before, so you'll see that I've got 9,500, which is kind of established at this point in terms of uh, the behavior. And uh, let me go ahead and execute this. Now this is considered to be the fastest way that you can use SSIS to import data into uh, 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 into a SQL Server database. So uh, as you can see, this is executing at the moment, and it's already at 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2. Great. And this one, if you look over here, is just 15 seconds in terms of being able to load data into the database. Uh, it uses a lot of efficient algorithms in terms of being able to move the data into the database. Uh, uh, a lot of it has to do with how uh, the data is actually read from the buffer pool because of the fact that it's all local to that server itself. So at this point, you'll see that uh, SQL Server Destination is the fastest so far followed by bulk insert uh, which is uh, a close second and then we got OLEDB which after we configure the RAM is also fairly fast and the last one we have is the ADO.NET so if I go ahead and open up ADO.NET uh, I'll change this to 9500 again again the configurations for all the data flow tasks are roughly the same because the properties are the same and uh, I'll go ahead and execute this. Now the thing about ADO.NET versus OLEDB is that internally within SQL Server for all the data movement that happens, uh, OLEDB is what is used. Uh, ADO.NET is a more generic uh, framework. So we've gone ahead and configured the, uh, the default uh, buffer max rows and to 9500 but uh, I think at this point it's fairly obvious that it's still slower compared to the performance of OLEDB. So we'll just wait it out. So as you can see it's uh, significantly slower. If I go to the progress you can see it takes about 1 minute 22 seconds in spite of the fact that we've optimized the number of rows in the buffer. So uh, at this point it's fairly clear that uh, ADO.NET is one of the slowest ways that you can move data into the database. So if I'm just going to go ahead and arrange this in terms of actual OLT, uh, ETL performance this would be uh, the current order. 
Now there are some options outside of integration services as well so we'll go ahead and explore them right now. The first one I want to show you is the BCP command so you'll see that I've already tried it a couple of times and uh, if I go ahead and put this in here you'll see that the command is BCP followed by the table name input because we're going to insert data from the CSV file into the server and uh, we're using a trusted connection and a format file called currency.xml and a batch size of 100,000. So when I execute this, it's going to go ahead and start copying data into the database. So we've got like 100,000 rows, 200,000 rows, and it'll go ahead and uh, insert all uh, uh, 2 million rows into the database. Right? If you look from my previous run, it's about uh, a minute and 10 seconds, which uh, it's not so fast, but I think a little bit of that performance degradation that's happening here with the BC c BCP command has to do with the fact that uh, the screen capture software I'm using is pretty CPU intensive. So BCP probably doesn't really have uh, all the CPU threads that it needs to get this job done properly. But in spite of that, you'll see that the performance is still fairly good compared to the ETL tools available. So you'll see here in this particular iteration, it's about 41 seconds. The good thing is that you can go ahead and change the batch size here for BCP as well. So if I make this 10,000, you'll see that it's actually a lot faster in terms of the way that it moves batches into the database. So uh, the overall performance in terms of uh, the load, you would need to actually measure it to find out uh, whether you actually got a significant improvement in terms of uh, performance from a batch size of 10,000 to say 100,000. Uh, I guess in this case the performance has degraded because uh, I would hope that by now it would have at least reached about a million rows and uh, yeah I mean it's uh, a little more than a million rows but I'm wondering if it's actually going to give anywhere close to 40 seconds at this point. So you can see at this point uh, it's fairly obvious that a smaller batch size of uh, 10,000 really didn't work to our advantage because uh, you'll see that the execution time almost doubled. So this is uh, BCP for you. Again, batch size does play a critical role, but it's probably not anywhere near uh, uh, the kind of uh, performance gains that we got with SQL Server Destination or Bulk Insert Task. So the next one I want to show you is basically this one here, which is uh, the open row set. So you'll see here that I've got an open row set query doing a bulk of a CSV file with a format file of uh, currency.xml. And in this case, you'll see that I've I'll just go ahead and do it this way, insert into my table, yeah, with, uh, no, I'm oh, sorry, with tab lock, yeah, and this, this is the, um, the open row set, so let's go ahead and execute this. Great, and you'll see that it's about 36 seconds to uh, load the data using uh, open row set. So that, I guess that falls somewhere between OLEDB versus uh, bulk insert, somewhere in, in that range, or uh, even uh, BCP command from the standpoint of uh, uh, the appropriate batch size. So these are the different options available to you in terms of being able to load data directly as it is into the database server. And I hope that the comparison will help you evaluate better in terms of what you're doing to improve your ETL performance. So uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and uh, thanks for watching.